Welcome to this webinar, Small Cell Architectures for Enterprise Deployment from Think Small Cell. Our presenters today are Amit Jain, the Vice President of Product Management at SpiderCloud, and Ronnie Haraldsvik, Chief Marketing Officer, also at SpiderCloud. Before I hand over the main part of the presentation to Amit, I'll just quickly recap what we mean by a small cell and where enterprise femto cells fit into that system. Now, small cells perhaps originally were known as femto cells and targeted at the residential market. And these domestic systems have been very popular. There are at least two operators worldwide with more than about a million units in live commercial use. What a femto cell is, is effectively a small miniaturized base station or cell tower providing full mobile phone service coverage inside the house for both voice and data. It's entirely compatible with existing mobile phones and can be used with, with any model without any special configuration. And these domestic units were typically uh, around four concurrent channels in terms of capacity although more modern units are now capable of handling up to eight. And what we've seen is the capacity of these small units has grown to meet the needs of the enterprise with eight, 16, and even 32 channel units now becoming more available. As the femtocell technology became more mature, it's also being used to address hotspots in city areas, in public areas such as transport hubs. And these outdoor units are called metro cells. And last but not least, we have isolated pockets of poor coverage in rural and remote areas, sometimes off grid where there may not even be power or wireline connectivity. And these systems can be connected through satellite backhaul. Today, we're going to focus on the enterprise requirements and Amit will be looking at a variety of different architectures to meet the needs of small, medium, and large businesses. The other point I'd briefly like to, to cover is the difference between planned and unplanned small cells. So in the past, metro cells, cell towers, were all very carefully planned by the network planning team within a network operator. And the same is true in metro cells and for small rural cells. By contrast, residential femto cells are simply bought and installed and appear on the network at random unknown locations. Enterprise femto cells fall somewhere in, in between the two because a network operator would be aware that a, an enterprise was going to be uh, provided with small cells, but may not know exactly the location within the building that they're going to be installed. And by contrast, where small cells operate normally in license spectrum, there has been a growing amount of Wi-Fi in these same areas, same categories, uh, but that operates in unlicensed spectrum. So in the residence, many people at home have Wi-Fi, of course, and in public areas, the network operators are also deploying Wi-Fi to offload their networks and provide better service. But that operates in unlicensed spectrum. And the issue there is that the Wi-Fi hotspots are not always coordinated and may in some cases be competing with each other for the same spectrum in the same area. So with that quick recap and positioning of a small cell, I'd like to hand over now to our presenter, Amit Jain for the main part of the session. Thanks, David. Uh, as, as you had mentioned uh, earlier, the small cell market is, uh, uh, has a tremendous amount of interest right now, and it is expected to grow very rapidly in coming years. Uh, the main reason why carriers are interested in enterprise small cells is because Enterprise customers often constitute the most profitable part of, uh, of their business. Uh, according to reports that we have seen from some operators, some operators that Spider Cloud works closely with, 
uh, 15% of their subscribers are uh, our enterprise uh, subscribers and the subscribers contribute as much as 30% uh, of their of their revenue so uh, twice as much compared to rest of their uh, subscriber base and uh, carriers want to go out and win these enterprise accounts want to have these uh, enterprise subscribers as uh, uh, as part of their business now that is why we are seeing uh, enterprise small cells uh, grow uh, grow pretty rapidly uh, and uh, there are investment banks right now that project that in the next uh, in, in the next several years uh, small cells uh, would contribute small cells as an overall category would contribute 18 percent of total ran um, capex and that enterprise small cells would constitute uh, about half of that uh, uh, Half, half of those deployments in, in, in revenue terms. However, if we look at uh, enterprises, we'll notice that uh, all enterprises are not are not alike. Um, enterprises come in, 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 in lots of different sizes and forms. Um, there are uh, there are small businesses who might have as few as maybe ten people working out of a single room. Or there could be uh, there could be enterprises which have uh, thousands of people, uh, maybe tens of thousands of people, big campuses, large uh, large facilities. So they're they're in all sizes. Uh, we have some some data out here which shows that the small enterprises uh, that who have less than uh, thousand square meters of uh, floor space constitute around less than ten percent of the floor space in the U.S. Uh, enterprises which have 1,000 to 5,000 square meters constitute 31% uh, of the floor space. Uh, enterprises which are 55,000 to 50,000 square meters are uh, about 39%, and then there are about 10% of the floor spaces with very large, uh, very large buildings. And if you look at it, you also notice that floor space typically uh, corresponds to number of uh, employees or number of uh, potential subscribers from an operator's point of view. So, so if you look at this chart, you'll see that around uh, uh, around 70% of subscribers work in uh, buildings, for instance, that are between 1,000 and 50,000 square meters. And, and this affects the way uh, people are designing small cell systems uh, to meet these needs. In our conversations with, uh, uh, with, with enterprises and with operators who are focused in this segment, we have learned uh, that there are, at a very high level, seven things that uh, carriers and enterprises care about. I think the first, the first thing is, is seamless mobility, because uh, I just because the the 3G or the 4G network at its at its heart is a mobile network. That is the reason mobility is the reason that uh, you have a 3G or 4G network in your uh, uh, in, in your access to a 3G or 4G network in your device in your office outside. And uh, uh, it is extremely important that uh, there is mobility between the macrocellular network and the small cell network. And then within the small cell network, if a carrier chooses to deploy multiple small cells inside a building, uh, calls should not drop. People should be able to seamlessly move across, uh, move across their office. The second is uh, consistently high throughput. Uh, the reason you have 3G or 4G service in your handset is, uh, uh, is, in, is to access uh, high-speed mobile data. So it is not acceptable, especially to enterprise users, if they do not get uh, a consistent multi-megabit per second experience. Uh, it is not acceptable if, uh, you know, in one part of the building you're getting two megabits per second, but you walk 50 feet and suddenly the, the throughput falls to 50 kilobits. That is not how these systems uh, should be. From both the perspective of the enterprise and the operator, there is need for what we like to call enterprise-centered management. That is, uh, even if you have multiple small cells inside a building, uh, together they should form one network because that is what the enterprise IT person is seeing. That is what enterprise subscribers are seeing. So the, the, the carrier should be able to manage it as a whole, not on a per small cell basis. 
the the entire system should be very easy to deploy and uh, should not require a tremendous amount of uh, uh, out of planning and this is what lets it makes it possible for the carrier to take their inbuilt system to uh, lots and lots of enterprises uh, as you well know uh, there are in building systems today and many of them uh, use uh, distributed antenna systems or repeater technologies and these uh, these uh, these of course uh, they they work in terms of providing coverage but they often take months to deploy and that means very few enterprises perhaps only the largest ones are able to get access to this technology uh, if the small cell system is really easy to deploy uh, more and more enterprises can get can can access the technology. Uh, backhaul has to be used efficiently uh, because whether the enterprise brings the backhaul to this network or whether the carrier provides the backhaul, uh, it is important that the small cell system doesn't use uh, more uh, transport capacity than it absolutely needs to because that impacts the business case. Uh, it should be possible to uh, locally switch both data and voice traffic so that uh, so that enterprises can offer uh, their employees access to the intranet or to other local services uh, from the point of view if you think from the point of view of an enterprise user uh, they don't want to be in their office and then set up a VPN on their uh, on their handset or on their tablet to access uh, applications on the internet the expectation would be that once you're within an enterprise uh, within within your office building you should be able to access any uh, application just like you would from your uh, PC connected on the Wi-Fi network or similarly on the voice side be able to connect to your PPX and finally uh, as I had said earlier uh, whatever solution is chosen has to be scalable it has to work for uh, an enterprise that has uh, a few hundred, a few thousand square meters, all the way to somebody who has fifty, hundred thousand square meters or larger, and that makes that makes it possible to offer a consistent offering to the entire uh, entire subscriber base. Now, uh, if we if we move to the if we move to the next slide, uh, you'll see that there are uh, at a very high level two architectural approaches to address this this problem. Uh, one is to use uh, is to build a small cell system where there are small cells of course in the enterprise but they all connect to uh, a, a controller that is based in the core network and then there are several variants of this approach that I'll talk about in detail in the next few slides the second approach uh, which is very different is to connect all the small cells in the enterprise to a local controller uh, and then this local controller connects to the carrier score network as a, or practically as a single small cell. And uh, in the next few slides, I'll talk about the, the pros and cons of both these approach of both these approaches. Uh, so if you move to the slide that talks about uh, uh, enterprise femtocells with hard handover, uh, on the on this slide I'm talking about how uh, solution vendors have tried to have tried to create solutions that rely on uh, scaling up residential femtocell technology uh, so David had mentioned at the beginning of the call that there are different kinds of uh, uh, different kinds of small cells and um, uh, one way to build an enterprise of uh, uh, femtocell is to take a take an existing uh, residential femtocell but offer higher power or uh, uh, maybe a higher capacity call it an enterprise femtocell and um, uh, and and then connect it back to the uh, connect it back to the core to a controller in the core uh, and and in this case, uh, and in this case, all the mobility is handled by a hard handover between these uh, between these small cells. Uh, each small cell is still acting to an extent like an island on its own. Uh, though the solution has is is attractive from the point of view that it uh, it, it leverages the 
perhaps the technology that has been developed for residential femtocells, it, it just doesn't scale. Uh, personally, before uh, joining Spider Cloud, I worked for uh, uh, one of the large residential uh, small cell companies uh, called Irvana. And one of the challenges we faced was how to just take uh, a number of residential femtocells and build much larger, uh, larger network. Uh, there are folks in the business who have uh, tried to um, uh, create uh, grids of these uh, of these femtocells, and they have probably managed to make it uh, to five or six um, femtocells working with inside a building. But uh, these these systems soon reach their uh, reach their limit, uh, and people start experiencing uh, drop calls or uh, um, or run into throughput problems. Uh, the other challenge that this architecture faces, uh, and perhaps all architectures which have a core based controller face, is that is that it's not possible to uh, locally switch the voice or data calls without breaking mobility. So you could be connected to a particular uh, small cell, and that, and from that small cell, you could switch to, um, you could locally switch to the internet. But as, as soon as you move to, uh, as soon as you walk across the building and you connect to another small cell, uh, that connection uh, would be basically lost and would have to be reestablished. So it's difficult to maintain. Uh, actually, it's architecture not possible to maintain um, mobility while doing local switching. Now, some of the disadvantages use of using a soft handover, of using, I'm sorry, hard handover are being addressed. Uh, and uh, that is the architecture shown in the next slide, which talks about uh, enterprise femtocells with uh, soft handover. In this, in this approach, a new uh, protocol uh, called uh, IURH has been defined in, in 3GPP. And uh, uh, the the soft handover is now delivered through the four network based um, uh, gateway. Uh, so yes, uh, te technically this should address problems around seamless mobility. It should also help in uh, uh, managing interference uh, across uh, small cells and, and by offering a better way of managing interference it will address some of the throughput problems. But at the same time, uh, this, is, this technology has yet to be deployed. Uh, I haven't at least seen uh, anybody successfully uh, building or deploying products based on IURH. So right now, the scalability of this uh, architecture is, um, is, is unknown. It definitely does use more backhaul traffic because now all the signaling related to uh, doing soft handovers between uh, uh, multiple enterprise uh, femtocells is going back to the gateway uh, in the core. Uh, and it also means that these gateways do need and do need a software upgrade. It's not just a change on the on, on the femtocell. And this gateway would be able to work only with um, uh, femtocells that support the IORH um, uh, interface. So uh, it remains to be seen if uh, how how this would work in practice. Another way of uh, doing um, core based uh, core controller based enterprise femtocells is to just use the Pico cell approach. So uh, the difference between uh, Pico cells and uh, what in our industry we are calling small cells is that uh, Pico cells are just uh, scaled down uh, macro cells. They only implement the node B uh, functionality. Uh, calls are not anchored on a Pico cell. They're always anchored back on the RSC. And in this architecture, the RNC or the radio network controller lives in the in, in the core network. So, uh, so at a very high level, this uh, architecture may look attractive because uh, we are just using the same RNC that is used for the macrocellular network, and the Pico cell often is, uh, as I said earlier, a scaled down macro. However, uh, uh, out here, the interface between the Pico cells and the RNC is the is the so-called IUB interface, which is uh, which is not which is not standardized. Uh, every macro cell supplier has its own variant of the IUB interface, which means that you can get Pico cells only often only from the same supplier base that has been used for the outdoor macrocellular network. 
the PicoCell architecture also uh, does not support self-organization, and um, uh, that makes the that makes PicoCells difficult to um, to deploy. Uh, and since all the calls are being anchored back at the RNC, there is there is no way to do any local switching, even if we uh, are not concerned about uh, maintaining mobility across uh, while doing local switching. So, uh, so lots of limitations in terms of how it scales and the level of services that it can provide. A, a radically different way of um, of building uh, enterprise small cell networks is to use a local controller uh, in the enterprise. So, in all the in all the previous uh, the previous three architectures, uh, uh, the enterprise small cells were connecting back to a controller in the core. Uh, in this architecture, there is a small lightweight uh, controller that actually resides in the enterprise. And then this is the controller that uh, actually is responsible for uh, managing all the mobility between between small cells. Uh, it implements uh, it implements soft handover, uh, which means that uh, in addition to mobility, it is able to uh, handle all the inter small cell uh, interference. It uh, in this architecture, it implements all the self organizing network SON functionality. Uh, it it acts as a single point of uh, management, so from a from an operator's perspective, uh, when they look at any of the performance data, when they look at key performance indicators for the network, when they're looking at faults, they're all seeing it from the perspective of the entire network in the enterprise, not from the perspective of a of a single small cell. Uh, it is the controller also acts as the point where uh, the small cell network is integrated with the local uh, intranet uh, or with the local PBX. So, so a lot of the things that we uh, that I talked about as considerations for uh, deploying small cell networks become uh, are are, at, are are addressed. In fact, I would say that practically everything that uh, uh, both enterprises and carriers are asking for from the point of view of small cell net or enterprise small cell networks at address in this architecture. It it still connects back to the to the core network using the IUH interface, uh, which is the interface being used for residential um, residential femtocells, and it does not require any change to the to the IUH interface. In fact, the controller makes the entire small cell network inside the enterprise look like one single large uh, small cell, and uh, the operator no longer has to worry about any of the internal uh, uh, aspects of the enterprise small cell network. SpiderCloud has been building solutions using this architecture, and uh, they are uh, commercially deployed today. Um, I have provided uh, two real-world examples of, uh, of deployments done using the ERAN, the Enterprise RAN architecture. Uh, the first is a building which has an which is a which has nine thousand square meters of space. Uh, and uh, on a on an everyday basis, sees anywhere from 800 to 1,200 uh, unique subscribers uh, working or uh, visiting this this building. Uh, this building has been de uh, deployed with 18 uh, small cells. That's Spider Cloud. We call them radio nodes, and a single uh, services node. And as you can see, it is handling thousands of, uh, of voice calls and tens of thousands of uh, packet data sessions uh, on a daily basis. And this entire system was set up uh, in, a, in the span of two, of two nights. So I would say probably less than, uh, less than 8 to 12 hours. Uh, as there's a second system uh, that, I've, that I've shown on this slide, which is much larger. This is a 16-story uh, building in the heart of London and has uh, close to 40,000 square meters of floor space. Uh, there are again thousands of people who work in this building. Uh, SpiderCloud has uh, deployed 65 uh, radio nodes uh, inside this building, all connecting to a single services node. 
and uh, we believe that this is the largest uh, in-building small cell deployment that has been done anywhere in the world uh, today uh, and is, is, is working extremely well. So, uh, so if we just move to the uh, to the next slide, where um, where we just have a summary table uh, comparing different small cell architectures, you'll notice that uh, uh, I've, I've compared the core based uh, core based controller architectures on the seven different design criteria, and uh, then compared uh, uh, them to the enterprise controller based architecture again using the same criteria, and uh, you would notice that. Uh, Overall, the enterprise controller-based architecture meets uh, all the design considerations. Uh, the other core network-based, uh, core-based controller architectures uh, meet, uh, meet meet some of them, uh, and there are others where they it, it kind of get there, but there is a, there's a long way to go. Okay, uh, so. If I kind of step back and perhaps uh, I would like to just talk about where uh, Spider Cloud sees its uh, its solution, its uh, fit in the marketplace. Um, as I've said earlier, there are uh, there are other enterprise small cell architectures, and there are things, there are applications for which they are they are definitely well suited. In fact, if I look at the entire uh, uh, enterprise market, I would say that. For uh, fairly small uh, uh, offices or businesses, let's say there are uh, two or three, there's a two or three person office, um, a small office, perhaps a residential firm to sell is, is, is great. It would be a very cost effective, easy to deploy solution. There might be uh, offices that are slightly larger, say uh, 500 um, square meters, maybe 30, 40 people, 50 people, and in these cases, it might be okay to just use uh, uh, a single high power, high capacity uh, enterprise time to sell, uh, or perhaps use uh, two or three of them connecting to a controller uh, in the core. But but there would be uh, but once you kind of get beyond that scale, once you are reaching a point where uh, there is an there is an office that has a few hundred people, uh, it has uh, say. Uh, larger than 5,000 square meters, uh, 10,000 square meters, and you need more than five to six small cells, then it is essential uh, that, uh, that to make that system work, there is a local controller. And that is where Spider Cloud sees its uh, small cell uh, scalable RAN as, uh, at this stage, the only fit in the market. Uh, uh, of course, the this, this Spider Cloud system does uh, scale scale down and can scale up as well. But there is a part of this. There's a segment of the market where um, it is it has a unique fit. Ahmed, I wonder if I could just ask you a question of clarification. Sure, um, David. You you seem to be saying that operators will need a multi-vendor solution to address the different sizes and shapes of these different categories of enterprise customers. Won't that add quite a lot of extra complexity to the overall network structure? Uh, David, I, I, I do believe that there is benefit for operators uh, to have multi-vendor uh, solutions. And the way to avoid the complexity is to have a single, um, uh, a single method for integration in the core network. So our strong recommendation is to uh, is to use IUH, uh, the IUH release eight protocol that has been standardized in 3G, and actually is a fairly uh, fairly a good, fairly strong uh, standard. Uh, so once once a carrier decides to use an IUH uh, gateway in the core, then they can connect um, uh, a broad range of small cells to the gateway. Uh, they can connect a residential femto cell. They could perhaps connect a single high power, high capacity enterprise femto, and then the Spider Cloud uh, local controller, which we call our services node, uh, connects back to the same controller, the same IUH gateway uh, in the core network. Uh, and in that case, the services node looks like just one large, uh, 
one large small cell. So in that sense, the carrier can get the benefit of using the best technology uh, for uh, building small cells inside enterprises uh, while uh, eliminating uh, the complexity that comes with having multi-vendor uh, and best of breed solutions for different uh, applications. David, does that uh, answer your question? Yes, thanks. Um, Amit, I think that okay. was very clear. Okay, thanks. Uh, so I'll, I'll probably just take a couple of minutes and uh, just describe uh, the, the Spider Cloud uh, solution right now. Uh, so, uh, so Spider Cloud builds uh, a, a scalable small cell system based on the uh, based on the local controller-based architecture that I described earlier. Our solution cons consists of two nodes. Uh, one is what we call our services node. Uh, the services node is uh, a purpose-built enterprise small cell controller. Uh, it is where we implement uh, soft handover for uh, uh, managing mobility and interference. Uh, all our SON algorithms are implemented out here. Uh, this becomes the single point of integration with the, with the local uh, intranet. And uh, it also acts as a platform for adding uh, and uh, value-added services. And I'll talk about that in a second on the next slide. Uh, the second thing that is, uh, the second node that is part of our solution is a radio node. So a radio node, a spider cloud radio node looks just like uh, um, uh, other enterprise small cells. Uh, basically uses very similar hardware. Uh, but it's a it's a fairly high performance a small cell. We are able to support uh, uh, up to 32 channels on 3G. Support HSP rates. Uh, we offer a range of um, transmit power options to uh, to cover different uh, coverage uh, scenarios. Uh, it is powered over Ethernet. Uh, very easy to install. Uh, is able to monitor the RF environment, which can be used. Um, for um, uh, which can be used for by the SON algorithms, and uh, uh, at this stage we are uh, building. Uh, we commercially have uh, uh, our commercial available radio nodes include radio nodes for 3G, uh, for 3G and Wi-Fi, uh, and uh, we are uh, in the process of working on an LTE radio node, which we will be uh, announcing soon. Uh, we do have uh, one of the things that does that makes our radio node radio nodes uh, feasible, especially on the 3G side, is our is a unique uh, physical layer uh, implementation. Uh, that physical layer implementation uh, helps us in uh, implementing uh, soft handover on 3G small cells, and is a, a cornerstone of our. Uh, of our solution. I think that is what makes it very difficult for others who are just using uh, traditional uh, residential femtocells or enterprise femtocells to create the solution that uh, that we have created here. The, the services node uh, also acts as a small cell uh, s s application and services enablement uh, platform. And uh, I have some details of it on the small cell RAN and services platform slide. So uh, today, most of the carriers that we are talking to are looking at providing cloud services to cloud-based services to enterprises. Uh, enterprises on their part are uh, uh, more and more looking at uh, moving applications uh, from their internal servers to the cloud. And many of them consider uh, carriers as, uh, as as great partners for hosting and delivering these uh, services. So, uh, so, so this is an area where uh, the enterprise would like the carrier to play a larger role and an area where the carriers definitely want to expand their business, offer these cloud-based services, and find ways to um, uh, to generate additional uh, revenue per subscriber, uh, the Spider Cloud Services uh, node plays a, a big can play a big part in making this possible. So we, of course, uh, once you put a, put a small cell system inside the building, it definitely provides.
provides the coverage and capacity that is essential to providing cloud-based services. But moreover, uh, we have uh, each of our services nodes includes uh, an applications module, an applications and services module on which uh, the, the carrier could host uh, uh, elements of uh, software that can be necessary to accelerate or in some cases to even deploy these cloud-based services. We are also able to use intelligence from the radio access network to make these services uh, much, to make these services much stronger. And uh, so, so that is another benefit that we get from uh, from the services node. Uh, overall, with the with, with the with our small cell architecture, uh, as well as with the and, and the services node. Uh, uh, and the fact that we are providing a multi-mode solution that is combining 3G, Wi-Fi, and LTE. The wireless operator is able to offer uh, is able to offer mobility as a service to the to the enterprise. Uh, they are able to offer a consistent experience inside and outside the enterprise uh, uh, with applications that are running uh, on the on, on the cloud. And uh, this helps the this helps the enterprises focus on, uh, on on creating applications and services that are essential for their business, uh, rather than spending their time their capex on um, on on building and running um, on running networks. So so that's a huge trend that we see, and we see the. Uh, we see small cell software by the by the operator as a big part of this uh, this change. Uh, so I'll be ha happy to answer any questions about uh, uh, enterprise small cells uh, and uh, our solution. Uh, if you would like to get access to uh, the slides or the uh, or any other information, please uh, send any of the uh, documentation requests to the link listed on, uh, uh, kind of shown on the slide right now. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Amit, for that very comprehensive overview of enterprise small cell architectures. I'd like to advise our viewers that they can now submit questions through the webinar system by entering them in the chat box on the right-hand side of your screen. We've already had a few questions submitted and we'll work through those and we'll, uh, but please do ask uh, some more and we'll answer as many as time permits. So the, the first question that I have here for you admit is uh, what measures would be required to integrate an enterprise small cell system with the operator's existing uh, core network? Um, you know for example could they reuse any existing small cell or femtocell gateway that they already have in place? Uh David, absolutely. The carrier can uh, uh, can, and actually we recommend that they reuse the, the existing um, femto cell or small cell gateway that they have. Uh, so the Spider Cloud Services node appears uh, connects to the core network using IUH, uh, which is the uh, which is a protocol that is implemented by most of the standard based uh, femto cell gateways that are out there, and it's the same interface that is being used by a uh, lot of residential premises today. So uh, the carriers can absolutely reuse uh, the core network integration uh, solution that they have today for their residential premises products. Good, thanks, Amit. Um, a question just come in. Uh, in public environments, and uh, we're thinking of libraries or other um, public areas, how would this system provide coverage for multiple carriers? for uh, multiple network operators? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, so our system is, a, is, is designed right now to be, um, uh, it's designed to be a single operator system. And its, uh, and its main objective is to provide the, the carrier that is willing to invest in this technology with a competitive advantage uh, in the market. So, uh, so let's say there is a there, there is a library or a public space, and a certain operator uh, wants to offer better coverage out there. Uh, today, 
uh, when they rely on traditional distributed antigen system based uh, products which are very expensive they, to make the business case work they need to be in a position where this where this architect where this distributed antenna system is is shared uh, the distributed antenna system often requires custom cabling as well which is why the the owner of this uh, public building insists that all the carriers just share the same system in uh, say a spider cloud system we are making it as easy to deploy as Wi-Fi in fact we have built this entire system to work just like an enterprise Wi-Fi system so a carrier could uh, could go to the library for instance and say look you've got Wi-Fi in your building uh, you already have Ethernet installed all the cabling is in space would you mind if I could uh, if, if as a carrier I'm, I can provide you with a handful of small cells that you are placing perhaps very close to your existing Wi-Fi access points and uh, then they connect back to a small controller in the closet uh, so this entire deployment could take I, I would say that deploying an entire uh, spider cloud small cell would take less time than negotiating uh, an, an agreement a legal agreement to share say a neutral host to DAS system in this building and over time I do expect that uh, once uh, the system is in place carriers can work out ways to share the uh, uh, share the small cell system that they have uh, this is something that could be worked out as a business arrangement uh, doesn't necessarily mean require additional um, uh, infrastructure or investment uh, in the future of course if uh, multiples uh, operators want to deploy small cells they can do they can do it uh, the technology is uh, significantly I would say a, a, a fraction of the cost of rolling out uh, say a multi operator DAS and connecting that to people cells or base stations that the carrier can bring in uh, overall I would say that our focus is on the enterprise uh, is on uh, uh, letting the uh, help, helping mobile operators uh, offer uh, new differentiated services to the to the enterprise retaining uh, and acquiring enterprise subscribers and uh, over time increasing their output from these enterprise subscribers thanks Amit um, the next question kind of leads on from that one you said how quickly okay. the system could be installed but what technical skill level is required to plan and install this system you know particularly compared to the the DAS or the the Wi-Fi systems you mentioned earlier uh, sure that's a that's, that's a great question so we have uh, actually modeled our system after enterprise Wi-Fi systems we uh, a lot of uh, the technical folks who joined our uh, uh, who joined our company from the beginning came from uh, enterprise Wi-Fi companies and our, uh, our our goal has consistently been to make this system as easy to deploy as an enterprise Wi-Fi system with the same kind of technical skills so uh, a, a typical Wi-Fi installer should be able to uh, install uh, a spider cloud system uh, this is very different from the DAS market where uh, a, a DAS system requires uh, uh, installers with very specialized skills in fact just laying out coax cable in a building requires a specialized skill and then of course all the art planning and tuning that has to be done with the DAS system out here uh, you basically need basic uh, IP net IP uh, installation skills and after that the system self-organizes uh, people who are installing the system do not require any knowledge of uh, 3G or 4G uh, or of any kind of 3G configuration parameters. It's a uh, easy, very easy to install Wi-Fi-like uh, enterprise Wi-Fi-like system. That's that's good to hear. Um, again, related to that, many large businesses already have their own in-house Wi-Fi system, and mm -hmm. and so there's a couple of uh, different questions that have been uh, put up about that. One is. Um, you know why would they need enterprise small cells when they've already got good Wi-Fi coverage and secondly is there any advantage in combining or co-locating the Wi-Fi with the femto cells so uh, so so the purpose of, uh, of of bringing 3g small cells um, uh, in the building is not necessarily to replace Wi-Fi uh, 
purpose of 3G uh, is to provide uh, uh, the purpose of bringing 3G small cells is to really bring the cellular network uh, inside the inside the building inside the enterprise. Today, what you find is that uh, uh, mobile devices have to use a certain are using one kind of a network when they're out when people are outside, and uh, then once they come inside the building, they are not able to use that network. Uh, people are uh, a lot of people are using their mobile phone as their primary uh, voice communication device rather than desk phones. So they expect that this device should just work uh, inside the building as it worked um, uh, outside the building. Now, uh, so, so that is why I, I would not say that that, that when we are putting 3G small cells, we are trying to uh, compete or offer an alternative to Wi-Fi. We, uh, if an enterprise has Wi-Fi, that is that is great, and there is also a tremendous benefit in uh, co-locating um, uh, Wi-Fi and 3G in the small in, in the same unit uh, in the same system. In fact, that is something that uh, uh, Spider Cloud offers in the market uh, right now. Uh, hosting both 3G and uh, oh, sorry, co-locating 3G and Wi-Fi in the same unit. Uh, is also advantageous if an enterprise is looking at outsourcing their uh, their entire mobile network, if you may, to uh, to a carrier. Uh, if they would like the carrier to offer it as a managed service, and uh, I think if mobile operators uh, uh, jump in and uh, offer these kind of solutions, they'll finally be able to uh, connect to turn these. To, to turn enterprises from just being wireless enterprises, where you're just connecting to your, uh, you know, to your wireless Wi-Fi access point, to being uh, mobile connected uh, enterprises where people could be, uh, uh, people are mobile, uh, whether they're inside the building, whether they're outside, they're moving throughout, they always stay, uh, they always stay connected. I think that's a unique value that uh, mobile operators can bring to, uh, uh, to the to the enterprise, and uh, yeah, and that's what I said earlier. We Spider Cloud is going in, building these uh, dual mode uh, 3G Wi-Fi products, uh, integrating uh, uh, 3G small cells with uh, both 2.4 and 5.8 gigahertz uh, uh, Wi-Fi, uh, creating a very competitive solution in that space. Thanks, Amit. Um, next question is about security, and uh, you know, do you have any? comment on what an enterprise IT security department might think about these systems? So uh, uh, our small cell systems are actually uh, designed for end-to-end -end, uh, security. So if I just take an example of our 3G system, uh, the link between the handset and uh, the small cell is uh, encrypted over the air. The link between the small cell and the services node is uh, is encrypted, as is the link uh, from the services node back to the back to the core network. Uh, we also um, use technology for uh, for secure boot. Um, for we have uh, all our storage and hard drives are all um, are all secured using uh, TPM based technology. So uh, this system has been designed to ensure end-to-end uh, uh, -end, uh, security because we understand that both enterprises and uh, mobile operators who are deploying these systems uh, uh, really care about security. Uh, authentication is uh, done using, uh, uh, in, in these systems is done using SIM technology that is in your handset and uh, uh, all the authentication servers, at least for our 3G small cell systems, are based in the operator's code. For our Wi-Fi system, we do offer a, a, a range of uh, authentication options, uh, both uh, SIM-based as well as based on 802.1x for authentication within the enterprise. Thanks, Amit. Um, you mentioned in your uh, product roadmap that you've got uh, an LTE product under development. Um, do, do you have a view on when it would be appropriate to introduce LTE and what would the critical factors that would trigger that market demand? Uh, so, so we believe that, uh, that enterprises will start looking for, um, 
anti small cells wants uh, a significant number of, um, of of employees of business people in the enterprise are using LTE handsets sig by significant I would guess maybe 30 to 40 percent at least perhaps higher and secondly once the carrier creates uh, unique services uh, that, that only run over the LTE network. So perhaps when uh, voice over LTE is launched or some kind of uh, uh, perhaps video conferencing or video telephony like applications are launched that work only on the LTE network, that do not work on the 3G network. I think that would be a stage where uh, uh, enterprise customers would be really uh, asking for having uh, LTE small cells in the building. Um, I would suspect at this stage that that is uh, still around uh, perhaps even two, two to three years out. Uh, from uh, from SpiderCloud side, of course, we will have LT small cell solutions uh, available much earlier. But I, I would expect that from the perspective of an enterprise, uh, they would need it when there is high enough penetration and unique LT based services. Thanks, Amit. And whilst you were answering that question, one of our viewers just asked what frequency would the LTE devices that you're you're developing operate at? Uh, so, so the uh, so we are basically building these LTE our, our LTE small cells in a in, in number of different frequency bands, uh, and uh, that. And actually, the end product depends upon the the carrier that we are working with for deploying these devices. As you know, there's a there's a wide range of um, uh, frequencies that are being used around the world, uh, in the U.S. and Europe and Japan. Uh, so there is no there is no single uh, there's no single or maybe even a couple of frequencies that solve all the problems. And we have built our products in a in sufficiently modular uh, manner that we can actually. Uh, very easily adopt the product to different frequencies. That's fair enough. Um, I mean, would would you agree that it's it's more likely to be using higher frequencies in building um, compared to the low frequencies for LTE outdoors? Oh yes, as a yes general definitely. Principle? I think that if there is a, if an operator has deployed LTE in a, a higher frequency band and in a lower frequency band, it's uh, uh, it's likely that they would like to they would prefer to. Uh, have small cells in the in the higher frequency band. It's absolutely true. B because of the shorter range, sure. Um, right. Okay, I think we've just got time for this one last question uh, before we wrap up. Um, it's a bit of an open-ended one, but what do you see as the main barriers preventing rapid take-up of enterprise small cells, um, whether these are technical or commercial barriers? Uh, that, that's... That, that's a good question. I think uh, uh, so far, uh, the, I, I feel that so far the barriers have been operational. Uh, the, it, it just has been, uh, people have looked at enterprise small cells for a while using these uh, uh, core network based controller approaches where uh, different solution vendors have proposed uh, kind of higher capacity, higher power versions of their residential vendor cells and somehow people have been trying to build uh, enterprise small cell systems using these products, and they just have been very difficult to um, to to deploy and to scale, and that has limited the adoption. I think a lot of enterprises, uh, especially the enterprises that carriers care about, that they really want to win, are are larger enterprises. Uh, carriers want to be in a position to go to the Fortune 500, the Fortune 1000 garment entities, and 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 win business out there, and that has just been very difficult with existing um, solutions. So uh, right now we are seeing tremendous interest and uh, um, uh, in the solution that we are bringing because it addresses the enterprise segment that I believe uh, operators are, are really focused on, that where they would like to make a difference. And uh, I'm very bullish on the uh, on how this market would grow uh, over the next uh, over the next 12 months. That's great, uh, Amit. Thank you very much indeed for those comprehensive answers for the these uh, questions. Um, we're now, unfortunately, at the end of our allotted time. So I'd like to thank both of our guest speakers today, um, Amit Jain and uh, Ronnie Haraldsvik, for their contribution. And if you'd like more information about the content of this webinar, including a related white paper, 
then please go to the link shown on your screen now and we'll also email out this link to you uh, tomorrow. There are a number of upcoming webinars in this series over the next month and you can visit thinksmallcell.com for more details um, and specifically a, a couple are covering both the multi-mode small cells that's 3G and LTE small cells and separately another uh, webinar from Spider Cloud asking what do CIOs really want from their mobile operator and that will be looking at the kinds of services that can be delivered to the enterprise. So with that uh, I once again like to thank our speakers and very much thank our audience for listening in and watching today and thanks very much for your time. Thank you David for hosting this and thanks to all the participants uh, for, for joining the webinar today. Thanks, Amit.